There you go, that's much better. You can clearly see how damaged. Hey people, welcome back. If you follow on Insta, you'll notice that I've actually was working on the trunk uh, lock mechanism. And as you can clearly tell, it's been dismantled. And there it is. Now, for those who don't know, uh, Mercedes uses what they call it vacuum pump. This is the actual vacuum pump. And you can see all the hoses that goes over there. And they feed all the way. See, this is it. This is basically for the trunk release mechanism. Now, vacuum pump, basically it works on air. So it pumps air into the hose. And based on that, it releases the lock mechanism. I suspected that the vacuum pump is faulty, that is not working. So I had to dismantle pretty much everything and cut all the, well, I, I, I just unplugged all the wires. It's fairly simple. You see, you've got two bolts over here, and once you remove them, you'll be able to fish this one out. As you fish it out, you just need to unplug all the wires, and it's fairly easy. Uh, once you do that, you'll be able to remove the trunk liner. And all the clips, you see, all the clips are actually, see, I don't know if you can see it, yep, it's a Mercedes clips. So they're all genuine and everything. Now, that being said, once this one was removed, I was suspecting that this one also might be faulty. But it wasn't. It wasn't. Now, you have to understand one thing. This. See, it has the trunk release. Now, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but let's just have a quick look. See? Did you see that? Press and hold. This one works. Which means the vacuum pump itself, I think it just plays up, but it is working. But that means it actually releases the lock. So what happened is something here is a bit stuck. Now, it could be just a matter of stuck or some pin or something that is not working. Uh, I've Googled it, I've checked on YouTube, and trust me when I say, it was hard to find what I was after, but eventually, eventually, one guy on YouTube, I don't even remember his name, he had like a clip, one minute clip on YouTube, basically to say how to uh, release the lock. And all what he said is just basically use WD-40, flush it, so just flood this one with WD-40, and that will release the lock mechanism. Because if you remember, this one, the push button did not work. Like it goes in, but nothing happens. The release does not release, basically. And quick tip for you guys. You see this? This is the actual key, or the key fob. But to get the key out, you see this plastic thing? You just need to put it back and push. I'm sorry, pull the key. There you go. So this is the actual key. Now, before the WD-40, this one did not work. So it did not turn left or right whatsoever. Now, I put WD-40. Now, why it didn't work? Just so you know, just so you know. This car was made in 2001. And, to, and it's like 20 years old, 20 years old. And ever since owned and made, basically, nobody uses the key to actually unlock the trunk. They always use the key fob to get it out. So granted, the mechanism inside either rusted out or just stuck in a certain position. That's why the key turning would not work. WD-40 will get it done. And surprise, surprise, it did turn. As it turned, this one releases and the trunk can be open. So technically speaking, this can open the trunk and solve the problem for you. I don't know if I can show it to you. Let me just uh, position the camera in a good position so that you can actually see it, okay? Just give me a... Okay, so this is where it goes into the trunk to latch into the body of the car. This is the actual key and this is how, if you can look at it now, now it turns left and right, okay? Now as is, if I push it, nothing happens. But turn the key and focus on this one. Turn it and press, there you go, it releases. So this is how we've got a trunk opening sorted out. 
Nice, don't you think? Now, since we've got this one sorted out, practically speaking, we still can uh, put everything back into place and just close this project. But we're not doing that yet, because if you look closely over here, you'll see I've got a small dent that needs to be repaired. This one. Also, if you look over here, I've got a massive dent. Literally on the corner, you see? This one. Now, let me just get you a light and see if I can show you what I'm talking about. There you go. So, this is the dent. And if you look inside, this is the liner for the trunk. And if you look closely, there. Let's just hold the light for you. There. So this is the area that I need to push forward. Now, because of the place and how annoying it is, I, did, I decided to buy a tool. It's a porta tool. Basically, it works for frame repair and everything. In order to uh, fix this drama, I think I need to remove the whole bed liner for both sides because I'm going to use this side as basically a base so that the machine itself can push it. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Once I buy it, or, well, once I get it, then I'll get you guys to see it and see it in motion and in action. Meanwhile, project for the day, the plan is we need to jack up the car. We've already got the jack stand, so the plan is we need to jack up the car and start working on the wheel assembly. As for the garage, let's just show you what we've done so far. Yeah, I kept this light open just for a breeze. So, this is where we are. My flag, and my T-Rex, there you go. My bike is hanging, I got me some shelves. I ended up going to Bunnings to get the shelves because they're actually good and cheap. And see, everything is sorted out. See, this is our paint section. This is the Ryobi section. I've got empty shelves here and I've got the other shelves over there. And I still got massive wall to add more shelves. Guys, check it out. I put the trunk back again and now it's locked and everything. Before me working on it, the trunk release did not work. Check it out now. So press and hold. Look. There you go. Problem solved. Psh, mic drop. Hey guys. Sorry, I'm trying to catch my breath. We just put the car on jack stands. You see how high up? Let me just show you each corner. There you go, jack stand on each side, just so that we have free access to this wheel so that we can get it out. Now, before we do that, always remember guys, the jack stands that you're gonna buy, make sure that you buy the right capacity one, the one that can put up with a certain weight. Check the description before you buy, don't go for something cheap. Cheap means mainly not sturdy enough, cannot handle the weight. Uh, working under the car, it's too, too, too risky. What I'm planning to do, when I get the wheel out, put the wheel under. So flip it, put it under. Same, flip it, put it under. That way, if God forbid something bad happened and the car or the jack fail, at least you'll have the wheel somehow protect you. Granted, do not work under the car unless you absolutely have to. In my case, I doubt that I'll end up working under the car. I'm just gonna work over here in this area so that any control arms that I need to remove or something like that, I'll have easy access to get them out. And I thought about only jacking the back of the car. That means the car will be tilted like this, which means any jerking, any movement towards the back might actually push the car forward. Even if you have your uh, emergency brake on or you put blocks to block the car from moving, there's always that potential risk. Don't risk it. Take your time, do the right thing. Now, let's uh, get this wheel out and see what sort of damage do we have. And there you have it. Wheel out, 
bolts out. This is the back wheel. Let's just have a look at what's the damage. Now, first glance, I want you to look at this. Can you see it? See how twisted? Yep. This is the one that we need to replace. This is one of back control arms. This piece. Had to get it out. You've got this bolt over here. I think you just need to remove it out. And there should be another one somewhere here, which is surprise, surprise. There's this, and there's that. Once we get that, that should basically loosen things up for us. Uh, is there anything else? Honestly, I do not know because I still need to have a quick look. Um, can you see? I mean, this one looks in a okay shape. It doesn't look like it's bent, this piece that I'm talking about. Because if you look over there, it's pretty much the same thing. So most likely this is the only piece that we need to sort out. Maybe, maybe this piece. I don't know. It does look straight to me. But yeah, you never know. Because the thing about it, if I'm going to buy the set, I'd rather be 100% certain that I will need the full set. Because what's the point in buying a set if you're only going to replace only one piece, right? Yeah. Anyways, uh, I'll look into it uh, behind the camera just to figure out what's what. And based on that, we'll know what to do. Cool. Guys, I'm going to give you footage never seen before. Never. As you can see, I'm under the car. Now, look at this. This is the non-damaged one. This is the control arm, and this is another one. I don't know, can you see it? Apologies for the light. But yeah, this and this, they're both straight. Look at the other side. Bent, and the other one is bent. So upon further inspection, we do have two pieces that need to be replaced. Apart from that, everything else looks in good nick. Even this one, by the looks of it, yep, it's identical. So I would say that's a good thing. Cool, let's get out of here. It's just freaking me out. Look where I'm at. And see, the wheel, I put it under the car. In case if this one fails, You've got this one as a safety. So any wheel I take out, probably I'll do the same thing. But so far, it's holding on. Let's get out of here. Guys, I think I've got some bad news. Upon further inspection, I'm noticing something that I don't think I'll be able to repair. I want you just to look into this side. I know it's dark. Let's just put some light. There you go. Do you see it? Let's just put this one here so that you can see what I'm talking about. There you go. This is the upper control arm. And as you can see, there it is. Let me just get you a better angle. There it is. It should hold on to this piece. Where is it? Let me just show you something. This. Over here, you see my finger? That's the frame. That's the actual frame for the car. And you can see the place is destroyed. Let me see if I can get you zoomed in. Just bear with me. There you go, that's much better. You can clearly see how damaged. There you go. So this is basically where the bolts bolt on and this is the control arm is just playing up now the bad news is for me to repair it i need to get a subframe the back subframe like the complete set which means i need to drop the whole back axle down change the subframe and actually replace it uh, guys i don't think this is viable because even if I did that, which will cost me a lot of time and money, I don't think I'll be able to recoup. 
yep i don't think i need to think about it uh let's just stop right here let me think about it and we'll get there we'll take it from there guys this is some bad news this car to me at least as a rookie it's not viable i can't fix it i mean i can but it's not worth it it's definitely not worth it because in good nick in a good shape that's going to fetch about five thousand the amount of money that i'm going to spend on it probably will exceed that uh, well, it's just money for labor, uh, uh, the parts themselves and everything. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Plus, after that, you need to register the car. Uh, I guess the right option at this point will be to recoup my losses and sell the car as is to someone else who's willing to either repair it or dismantle the car for parts. Sadly, this is not the end that I hoped, but at least i admit my limitations and this is where i say i can't until next time you take care of yourself and i'll see you next time okay yeah